the person that shouts the loudest seems to be the one that gets the accolades. I think people are just using it because they think the bigger is better and it isn't. AI is not even in its infancy. AI doesn't really have common sense. Don't buy AI tools. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's Runsley live from Singapore. I've been here in Singapore for the last couple of days attending OpenAI's Dev Day. They released some really cool features. Also some really interesting things that you can do with AI that have not been around for a, a little while, especially with reasoning and some of those things. OpenAI came out with over the last few days have been absolutely insane. They highlighted how important the use cases and the customization for the use cases rather than the actual tool. Hey, it's Ronsley. Welcome, you AI geek, to Amplify AI. So let's start with some of the announcements that had come out from OpenAI. But before that, I've got 10 prompts that will change the way you write or think about AI, I promise you. And it's not just like a prompt for you to copy and paste. They're just single lines that are gonna change everything and the way you do things. And if you're interested in that, go to the Amplify AI's website and look for the Prompt Masters Codebook. And I'm gonna share in that, I'm gonna talk about some of them today, but you know, if you want all of them and some bonus ones down the bottom, just go to the Amplify AI's website and come to products and services and click on Prompt Masters Codebook or even here, free prompt code book for business. It's gonna take you to, to that. And it's, I promise it's gonna be amazing. In one of the lives that I did, I think earlier this week, I, I did go through the first two. So today I'm gonna to go through some of the others. But before we go through that, I wanna go into Facebook. And some of the things that OpenAI sort of came out with over the last few days have been absolutely insane. Firstly, the big key themes of what OpenAI spoke about was the fact that they want to be best in class when it comes to models. They are very heavily talking about multimodality. And what multimodality means is images, videos, text, all sorts of modalities, different audio. So there's all these different modalities and multimodality is going to become a very important part of artificial intelligence going forward. They spoke about model customization, which actually is a huge part and maybe it's something that I will talk about. And the next thing is talking about scaling applications and AI applications. And those are the four main key themes of what they spoke about at Dev Day here in Singapore. But I want to talk about model customization in particular, primarily because I think that most people don't know what that is and feel like because iPhone models, the higher they go, people feel like the higher the model, the better the model. And that's just not the case when it comes to AI models. AI models are very different. There are some factors that you gotta consider when you're considering which AI model to use. And those factors include cost. What does it cost to execute the intelligence on that prompt? How much memory or context is required for it to execute properly? How long does it take? What's the time or the inference time for it to execute the prompt? So there's a few things to take into consideration. And also, sometimes what happens is the larger, not sometimes, all the time, the larger the model is, the longer it takes to think. So when you're having a chatbot, as an example, on your website and someone's typing in a question and it takes long to respond, it is usually because there's a big model at the back end of that. And a lot of the times you don't even need that model with that much computing power for you to do anything with it. But I think people are just using it because they think the bigger is better and it isn't. So model customization is something that's huge. They spoke about some really important points uh, when it comes to model customization. And models are gonna be very small going forward actually. And it's going to be more specific to use cases. So training small models on use cases is gonna be something that uh, is going to be going forward. So what they talk, spoke about is not to use the big models for everything to use. So that was something interesting. This is the reason I took this picture it is because they have started to introduce a format called strict and a strict equals true, which actually helps with certain enums, which again is a very big dev uh, focus. But for business owners, I don't really 
think that, you've got to know that yet. So my learnings from the OpenAI Dev Day were a few. First of all, AI is not even in its infancy and it's like so earlier on that there's potential <laughs> for some really insane things going forward. That's number one. Number two, smaller fine-tuned models are going to be more important and more used than the bigger expensive ones, which I just spoke about, the model customization piece. The next thing is what was really fascinating is that the so-called AI experts that are giving all these different advice on artificial intelligence on social, I guarantee that none of them would understand more than two minutes of what was being said, which is very interesting considering everyone has advice on what prompts and how to use different things in artificial intelligence. I really want to sort of hammer this home because right now, the person that shouts the loudest seems to be the one that gets the accolades or gets the title. And you can see that with the American elections. You can see that with all the whole other things that are going on around the planet. So what was interesting is where people find value. And right now, I think everyone's finding value in things that are quick and short. And I really want to hone in the idea that AI is not going away. And the more you learn and the more you understand the basics around AI, the better it's going to be for you. And the last thing I was big was don't buy AI tools. Actually, I've been saying don't buy AI tools for a long time. AI tools will come and go and you get caught in your team transitioning between tools and then the culture and the processes need to change and you want to sort of make that easy for yourself. So don't focus on AI tools, focus on your processes, focus on your methods, focus on the things that you are good at and that you've been implementing in your business for ages. Focus on the process and then inject AI into the elements of the process that, that will help you actually improve the process, make the process more efficient. So what I mean by that is that if you have a really good way to onboard clients, you have a really good process. When they come in, you ask them to do X and then Y, and then you ask them to book a call or whatever your situation is and how you onboard someone to know what your processes are. And if you already have that process dialed in, use that process first. Don't go and get an onboarding AI tool that's going to make promise you a whole bunch of things that they don't deliver on. And by the way, if I go, actually, this is a really good, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to find my school group. So school.com slash amplify AI. And in here is a great post here. Caroline Dean is an amazing operator, by the way. She's an entrepreneur that helps dental practices market themselves. And she spoke about this 90% of Sintra X. And by the way, for most of you looking at socials, you'll see these ads come up all the time, right? And she obviously signed up for it and you can see the results. So I'm like, what is it meant to do? She's like, it sells itself as AI assistance. They are so bad, but people who don't know any better think they are amazing. So you just see the reasons for sometimes people recommending things. That's why I keep saying that I am uh, tool agnostic. I'm definitely tool agnostic. And even though I'm very surprised that OpenAI invited me to their dev day, I am not only dedicated to OpenAI in any capacity, even though a lot of the artificial intelligence pieces that I have built for clients over the last two years have been with OpenAI primarily because of ease of use and different reasons for longevity and other reasons that we've used. But we use multiple models. So we use everything from free models for certain things that can be used for free stuff to highly complex models that can be used for very complex things. So here's the last piece of thing that I want to highlight here. I also heard good things about it from someone that I trust. Hence my original excitement. I think it, that it is probably great for people who are new to AI and don't know how to prompt properly and train ChatGPT in their tone of voice, etc. So this is just an example of Sintra, of a tool that doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. But just imagine that you came onto the scene and decided that I'm going to take my whole team and my, all my processes that I've been doing all this while really well, and I'm going to get Sintra and we're going to make it a lot easier. And then you get it and you find out that it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So that's what I mean by don't buy AI tools. And again, at Dev Day in Singapore, they highlighted how important the use cases and the customization for the use cases rather than the actual tool. So those are some things to keep in mind. Some of the things that 
I thought was really fascinating, which I think is amazing, is uh, OpenAI's operator agent, which is coming. And if you don't know about the operator, it is a hands-off control over everything on your computer. So it isn't just a chatbot, it's not an agent, it is a mixture of agents and chatbots. And it's designed to control everything from a web browser to applications on your computer. And you can literally say something like, I really need to communicate to my team that we have a big week coming up and I want to be able to make sure that they understand these, these, this, and this. So the AI will potentially take that information and create a Slack message or maybe give you some recommendations. I think you should have all hands meeting or you should have an email that goes out or you should have a blog post. Or, whatever the reason is on how you explain that, but it'll do that all for you. Write the post, create the calendar invites, send it to your people, all hands off, right? So we know that agents are already here and it, you know you just have to, I suppose, be a developer to get agents working for yourself, unless you use Crew AI, but even Crew AI, um, very technical in its ability. I feel like this is gonna be the big next step and I think that you should really check it out. And if you don't, know what I'm talking about, you can come into the school group and Claude released a version of this. Once you sign in, you go into classroom and one of the first things you'll get access to is this hero origins piece. And under this here, if you go to Claude's computer use, because what I did was I, I installed it on my computer and I had it working, uh, Claude's computer use, and I show you how it goes about doing a particular task hands off. And I just ask it a certain thing and it opens up the browsers and it opens up uh, Excel sheets and it does its thing and it does it automatically. And the, there, the reason there are three parts, and I recommend you watching all three, the way workflow goes down. But this is an example of what uh, OpenAI is talking about. Now, with releases, I don't know how much to trust because Sora got released, or it, it didn't get released, but it was teased to the public. These are like very amazing prompts that you just one lines that you add to your existing prompting that will make it a lot better. AI doesn't really have common sense, so you want to be able to be very specific about it. Every generic prompt that you have from now on can be made much easier by just adding this one line. Hey, AI geek, thanks for listening. Your job doesn't stop here. I want you to lend your voice to the conversation. So you can join those conversations, discussions, new trainings, new recordings, and the rest of the AI Geeks by going to AIgeeks.co. Also, share this podcast with a friend, another potential AI geek. Until then, much love.